Hello and welcome to the channel. Before we get into the video, I just want to take a quick moment to thank all of my members whose names are on the screen right now. So thank you so much for your ongoing support. I really do appreciate it. And being a member doesn't come with just a shout out. It can come with just a shout out if you get that particular tier. However, I also have two additional tiers, one of which will include a live stream every other week. And on the final tier, you get the shout out, the live stream, and on the weeks where there is no live stream, I will upload a members only video. And that is kind of a bit of everything. Sometimes it's a recipe. And at the moment, it's a lot of get ready with me and I tell you about my dating life. But if you are curious to see more personal videos, I usually create that sort of content for my members. But thank you all so much for your ongoing support. It does mean the world to me. And let's get into the video. Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona. I'm also known as Shikara Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. Um, if you like this top, let me just do my ambassador. Ah, fuck cat. <sighs> let me just do my ambassador duties here. So I am an ambassador with a better bodies. This is a better bodies like crop top, sports top. It's not a bra, it's just like an actual top. And uh, yeah, if you want to get a 15% discount, then use BB15 at checkout for better bodies. Links will be in the description. I'm an ambassador. I'm not an affiliate. I don't get um, I don't get anything from these links. Basically, it's just that I get a discount code when I shop online. Um, I get I get my own personal discount code so that I can wear their stuff and promote it on social media. Basically. So if you're interested, I will uh, link the link to this top below. It's kind of cute. So today we are going to be doing a glitters and lasers reaction. Um, my last video did really well, actually. It had like, I don't know, like 50,000 views or something, which is like, wow, for me. So why not do it again? You guys like it? Works out for me. Uh, today we're going to look at the trigger warning, I want to lose weight video that she love uploaded on the 11th of April. And I guess we'll see what's that, what that all, is all about. And more importantly, what is she going to do to try and lose weight? And is, she, does she, is this just... Is this a clickbait title? Is she for real? Because saying you want to lose weight and being part of the positive movement, that is blasphemy, basically. So, yeah, anyway. Hey, everybody, my name is Anna, aka Glitter and Lasers, and welcome back to my channel. Today is a really interesting day because we're revisiting a video I did all the way at the beginning of the year where I set goals and intentions for how I was going to work towards improving my body. Now, if you haven't watched that video and you want to catch up on what I talked about, you can click the link here, check it out and learn a little bit more about the process. Now, if you've already seen that video or you just don't want to watch it, no harm, no shame. Um, let me catch you up. I made a whole bunch of goals earlier in the beginning of the year to really just work towards having a healthier version of myself, right? I like to call it my most capable self because I'm not looking for a certain weight or a certain ability. I'm looking to be able to be capable of doing the things I really want to do in life. And it's good that you recognize that being the size that she is, she is not going to be able to do a lot of those things because, you know, it does really heavily restrict your, just your ability to live life properly. And I'm not talking about, oh, well, spaces aren't made for big people, which they aren't, obviously. I just mean in general, just general mobility. Like that video she did the other day about going on a hiking trip and walking on the sand and just realizing like how, um, I guess, incapacitated is the, maybe the right word. She is by her own body, despite the fact that she is fairly fit and active compared to a lot of people her size, which is great. Um, I think maybe that was a bit of a wake up call and that she realized that actually She's very far from normal, shall we say. And um, so I set some goals that I thought would set me on that journey. Now I'm gonna be very real with you. I don't remember all of the goals I set. And I think that's part of the problem is I just set too many goals. And I realized- I personally don't do New Year's resolutions. I don't understand them. I think if you wanna do something, you do it. You don't need to wait till Monday. You don't need to wait till next week. You don't need to wait until after your birthday, until the new year. If you really wanna do something, you do it. That's the kind of person that I am. If I decide I'm gonna do something, I, I, I just do it because that's what I want to do. So yeah, um, my cat's been needy as you can tell. Little Violet Grey, little little Mish Mish, little Missy likes to have cuddles on her belly. <laughs> 
Do you, do you have animals and do you sing to them? I'm always making up songs for my animals. Ain't I? I'm always serenading you with my beautiful voice. <laughs> Um, oftentimes with like diet culture and, and kind of like health culture in, in, in general, we tend to like push this like all or nothing, change your whole lifestyle at once mantra and then it's not achievable. So I did try to go like halfway on this when I was setting my goals, but I still think I went too far. I think really at the end of it all, I focused on two things and I did those two things really, really well. And everything else was just a little bit overwhelming. So what did I actually do? So I am happy to report I did actually work out for a hundred days. In fact, as this video drops, it will be a hundred, I just burped, it will be a hundred and seven days. Um, but is that consecutively or is that just since the beginning of the year? I'm guessing maybe it's consecutive a hundred days. Like sometimes people ask me about rest days and having like full rest days. I don't really believe in full rest days unless you're sick or you're injured or something like that. At the end of the day, we are meant to move around. I don't believe in like having a day where you literally just lay on the sofa all day long. I just, I just, I just can't get behind it. I don't think so. I think you should just always be moving and doing something. Being actually completely inactive for a day, I, I don't think is good. Unless you need to for medical reasons, basically. Uh, because I actually started a week before the year, new year started and I wanted to launch this uh, 100 days out from, you know, the beginning of the year because for reasons. Um, so I've been doing really, really good with that. Basically, I found a groove and it is a habit now. I do think about being active. I do check my watch. Usually like mid-afternoon and go, okay, what do I still need to do? It's become literally just part of my daily life. I really don't even... Talking of fit watches can be very beneficial. I think a problem with fit with Fitbits or uh, activity trackers is that, um, for one, it, you can get a bit obsessive with them, and two, I think I mean, a lot of people make the problem where they'll go for a walk and the Fitbit will be like, "You burned 800 calories going for a walk," like maybe you did, but just because your Fitbit is telling you that you've burned X amount of calories, it doesn't mean you should be eating that many more calories. Because when I was using a Fitbit, I was burning between four to four and a half thousand calories. Um, a day that's kind of my normal energy output so that would mean that I would be eat if I would so that would mean that technically if I was to be wanting to build muscle or even um, be under eating on that I would be wasting away and the calories that you burn per heart rate and like metabolism it doesn't it can give you a gauge as to what your energy output is like and like how intense your walking or your training has been but it's not a hundred percent accurate in terms of but well, it just isn't like Fitbits mess up and stuff like that. So you should never use your, um, you should never, if your daily expenditure on your Fitbit is say like two and a half thousand calories, but you're trying to lose body fat, that doesn't mean that if you eat like, um, say like 2200 calories, that you're going to lose body fat. It all depends on like your lean mass. Uh, it depends on how your metabolism works, how well you sleep. Yes, use it as a gauge to see your activity levels. You use it as a gauge to see how um, how high your intensity output is. But if just because you burn 500 calories on a Fitbit, that doesn't mean you should eat an extra 500 calories. Because if that's the case, I would be shredded all all the time forever. Because I've I've whenever well, I did have my Fitbit, I was always under eating by at least a thousand, if not 1500 calories. So it doesn't quite. Um, the calories on the Fitbit don't necessarily translate into eat that much food, if that makes sense. And I don't quite understand the science behind that, I'll be completely honest about it. I did ask my old coach to explain it, and he just said that it's just down to basically, like, a heart rate is not necessarily, a heart rate calories burned is not necessarily representative of, like, how the body functions, because obviously it's quite complex, as opposed to just taking more measurement, in simple terms think about it anymore and what's really cool is with the Apple watch and I'm not trying to sell you one but I am obsessed and I do love mine it does tell you how much you've improved to where you were previously so I just actually am sharing these with you so you guys can see you can see that I'm walking further I'm burning more calories I'm standing more per day basically everything is up and that's that's just basically because I've made being active more central in my life and it's really apparent with that I've also started to see my body change a little bit candidly I have not really lost a lot of weight my body has changed shape a little bit I'm definitely more so can we just put this into a perspective? Like, I don't know how tall she is, but we all have eyes and we can see that she's a very big lady. She is not, um, she's like Amberlynn sized, right? She has to be like 500 pounds, maybe more than that. I don't know how tall she is. Like, oh, your height will matter uh, the weight as well. But the reality is if she has increased her energy output significantly, and on top of that, 
she's not actually losing weight. Can you Im just imagine the amount of food she's eating? So I'm just put the camera down because I want to keep the kitty in here. Like the amount of food she has to consume to maintain her size with that added energy output is insane. Like I just I can't I can't even begin to imagine. It's thousands, thousands of calories a day. We're not talking, oh, like, yeah, she's eating an extra couple of hundred. No, no, she must be, well, she looks ambulance size to me. So she's probably eating three and a half, four, four and a half thousand calories a day. With the energy output to that, maybe like four and a half to five if she's working out and training that much. So that's insanity, isn't it? more toned. I'm definitely like seeing some decrease in my chest. I'm also seeing an increase in my like physical abilities as far as like muscle and like being able to support myself in things like push-ups and sit-ups and all of that stuff. So I am seeing physical changes. They're just not weight related. And I'll be honest, that was a little bummer for me because I thought, man, I'm pushing myself. I'm doing all these things. I'm gonna lose so much weight, which is honestly like ye old time diet culture hanging out in my head. And, and to be very candid, and I will say this now because who gives a damn, I do want to lose weight. And not she should want to lose weight because she's she is far too big for what is healthy for a human being. It's I mean like she's sitting there, you can literally see her bum on the side. Like this on the sides here, that's her fucking bum. That's crazy, you know. She's really like it's great that she's keeping fit and healthy, but unless she does anything about her diet, there's only so much fit and healthy you can be when you're that size. Not so much because I want someone to think I'm hot or I want society to treat me better. I really don't care at all about either of those two things. But in my weight, there are some things that I'm prevented from being able to do because I just weigh too much and I don't want to weigh that much so I can participate in those things. And it's as simple as that. If that frustrates you or makes you mad, bye. You don't need to be here because I do think that it's something that we have to talk about. Like, It's reality. It's reality. You cannot... I know that there's a lot of science denying and body positivity and health in every size. It's very well documented that being super morbidly obese, it's just unhealthy. You do have a shorter lifespan, you do have increased risk of heart disease, uh, increased risk of cancers, increased risk of diabetes, and all of that is tied into diet. And not it's not just the body fat. I mean, the body fat makes a difference on the endocrine system, which obviously then has negative effects moving forward, and there's a lot of pressure on organs and joints and all of that too. But a lot of it also comes from the food that you consume because you, I just don't know if it is physically possible to get to this level of obesity eating whole foods. I mean, so I suppose technically if you ate like lots of oils and stuff like that, but I mean like, um, let me rephrase it. If you followed a, a, a clean diet, I don't really believe in the word clean. I think it's a bit like, it doesn't really make sense, but like a healthy whole foods diet, a balanced healthy whole food diet. I don't know. Um, if anybody could sit there and eat five, six thousand calories a day of whole foods just because it is so filling and uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't give you, it, it is more, sa it is more satiating. Um, usually it has more vegetables and fibers in it. So, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna feel full up quicker and for longer. This is why it's, I encourage people to eat whole foods and you can eat a lot more and feel a lot more full up. But yeah, I don't know. Wait. I don't know where I was going with that to be honest. <laughs> Sometimes I go up on these tangents and I'm just like, what the fuck was I trying to say here? <laughs> can't always be removed from the equation when you're talking about health. And I do think my weight does prevent me from doing things, some things I want to do. So there you go. So I did exercise as much as possible every day and I did close my rings and achieve my goals for that. I also got really good at drinking more. I feel like I drink way more water and just beverages in general than I ever did previously. I'm still not the best at this, but it's definitely something where I've noticed my own internal sensors for thirst have increased. So I didn't ever crave water or, or liquid ever before this hundred days. And now if I don't drink a lot during the day, I feel it. I feel Yeah, water intake is so important. A lot of people just like neglect it. I personally don't understand how you can only have a liter a day. Like this is almost, this is almost a liter. This is my second or third, third one today. I'm not sure, but like I, drink i have to anyway because my coach tells me to drink six liters but it's not for me to drink six liters of water it's not a problem now granted i eat a lot of carbs and obviously i train a lot so i sweat a lot i do a lot of exercise so i do need to i do have a slightly higher water intake requirement than many people but uh if i don't drink enough water i get headachey i feel lethargic i feel hungry i feel achy um it impacts my digestion, everything like it is. I noticed the difference. And I think when you do start drinking a lot of water, you just naturally get thirsty more. And uh, yeah, it helps with weight loss as well. Because sometimes a lot of people do confuse their hunger singles, singles, <laughs> hunger singles, 
hunger signals with thirst signals. So often people think they're hungry when first thing in the morning when actually they're dehydrated and you just need to drink water. I would just say like start your day with drinking half a litre first thing in the morning. Oof. Don't even think about it. And if you don't like drinking water because of the flavour, which a lot of people don't like the flavour of water, what you can do is stick through there some mint leaves and fresh lemon. That can be very nice, makes it very refreshing. Refreshing, words are hard. Uh, or sometimes, well, or sometimes, or what you can do is you can put through there like some sugar-free cordial to flavour it up a little bit. So yeah, you don't have to drink plain water. Just make sure you do drink your water feel the dehydration and my body reminds me like, hey, you need some water. So when I think about it, I feel like that's like a noticeable change, right? Like my body is now telling me when I don't have enough water, where previously I'd kind of lost that signal. When it comes to food, I think I made a goal, but again, I don't remember and I have not rewatched the video to eat three times a day. Failed. Absolutely failed. Trash. Did not do a good job at that one. And I think it's because it wasn't the right goal for me. I typically eat a big meal at the end of the day. And that is, that I thought was a problem. And I'm beginning to learn that maybe it's not the problem, but I just need to rethink about when I feel. In terms of weight loss and lifestyle, it doesn't really matter when you eat or how often you eat. What matters is that you just stay in a caloric deficit. Uh, like there is some science around that your body can only absorb X amount of protein. And people say like, you can only have 30 grams of protein per serving uh, for the body to assimilate it, which I think depends on the individual. I think it depends on your lean mass and your training and all of that. But the point is, is that even if you do eat more than 30 grams of protein, nothing's really gonna happen. Like your body just doesn't absorb it. So you just pee it out basically. Um, so I've got like a little cat hair or something like that on my nose and it's absolutely irritating me. But, Besides that point, unless you're an athlete and unless you're prepping for a competition of some sorts, nutritional timings aren't that important. You probably want to make sure they either eat before or after a workout just to either have energy or to replenish the energy that you've burned. Um, that's down to individuals. I trained faster for many years and that worked fine. At the moment, I don't anymore and that works really well too. What matters is, is that you just, especially if you're trying to lose body fat, then you stick within your calorie allowance. So I'm guessing what happens with her is, is that she maybe does go an entire day without eating or she like snacks throughout the day on small things and in the evening she's super hungry and then she'll sit down and just, she, she just has to have the most enormous takeout. Which begs the question, like how, I just still, still, I still struggle to then think about how it is that she's not losing weight. Because even if she did one big meal a day, is it like, what is she eating? Like, is she drinking fucking butter? Because like eating like 4,000 calories in a single meal, like don't get me wrong, I can eat. I can eat a lot. Um, I don't know if I would have the capabilities to eat like 4,000 calories in a sitting though. I could probably do like two and a half, three, but if the 4,000 calories on a consistent basis, like a daily basis, I don't know if I could do that, but she must be, I think she probably is snacking as well throughout the day. But in terms of like, just general, it doesn't matter. If you want to have one big meal at the end of the day, that's fine. Just don't eat throughout the rest of the day. If you want to split it out, then that's fine too. I, I personally think it's better to eat more little and often to eat at regular intervals so you can kind of keep your blood sugar levels a bit more stable um, and you're kind of always eating and you don't really get like those periods of like being ravenously hungry but i don't know it doesn't always work for some people with their work with their lifestyle some people just don't get hungry in the mornings um it is what it is if you find like intermittent fasting works for you then do that all of that is perfectly fine so in this kind of 100 days, I made sure that every day I was being very, very active, which meant I don't feel like I got enough time for recovery. And I think you can really see that in the Hawaii hiking video where I was just exhausted. And the reality is, is when I push myself like that, I need to know that the next day I need to be able to relax. I need to be able to take care of myself and I need to not push myself too hard. So going into the... Mm, I don't know what I think about that. I think obviously maybe in her situation it is different because of just her size, right? Um, whatever is like a hike for her is probably a lot more than for others. I did get a question in my Instagram Q&A's the other day about what I think about... Was it my Instagram Q&A's? Overtraining? Was it somewhere else? I can't remember, but I think overtraining is a thing. I think it can happen. I just don't think it happens to most people. I think overtraining can happen if you, like, indeed train twice a day and you're just doing very heavy lifting, you're training at max intensity, uh, you're natural and you're not eating enough, then yeah, you're not sleeping enough, then yeah, definitely you can get overtrained. But I think if you just go to the gym every day for an hour and you're just like, you know, just having a casual workout, I don't think you need to worry about overtraining. Um, overtraining is something that usually happens to more, like, like 
people that are very dedicated to their training in whatever that may be so but obviously in her situation just because she's so big i'm sure that she does get not overtrained but she's putting a lot more pressure on her body so she probably does need a bit more recovery um and obviously injury prevention as well comes into that if she's tired and she's walking and she's still achy then maybe she is not balancing the body the way she should and then that way you can incur further injuries because you you know what's like if you have like a, a like a twisted ankle or something like that then you walk funny and they end up with back pain you know so everything's if something is out of balance somewhere then it will have a negative impact somewhere else in the body the next 100 days or the next three months i want to look at thinking about things like okay if i do a really hard workout on monday i want to make sure i do a light walk on tuesday and starting to optimize how i work out so that i am pushing myself to that next level but i'm also allowing my body to rest and recuperate which i don't think i did this last 100 days and honestly I have questions for anyone who does successfully work out every day, how they do that and actually progress. Because I do feel like not allowing myself to have a break, like just made it impossible for me to. It's just a case of, um, I work out pretty much every day. I get my steps in, I do weight training, two days on one day rest. And I found that it's been the best for me, two days on one day rest. Um, I don't believe in that people should be trained doing weight training more than three days in a row, ideally not more than four, because you just get too, too, too tired. Um, but it's, a lot of it is sometimes, a lot of it is that some sessions are just shit and you, you just still do it. And obviously, you know, I'm not her. I, I don't have enormous amounts of excess body fat, so I'm not going to need as much recovery as what she does. But a lot of it is down to fueling right, sleeping enough, uh, resting, stretching, and uh, knowing when to push your workouts and when to take a step back and go with lighter loads. And some of that does obviously come with experience as well. But um, yeah, I think the biggest thing is just being lower in body fat significantly. And then for food, I am going to calorie restrict. I know a lot of you are angry and mad about this, but I don't care. She needs to. If she's not counting calories and restricting to some degree, she is never going to lose body fat. Simple as that. I feel like I'm potentially eating more than I think I am, and I think I need to change. Uh, I, I will put... I will dare... To what was I? I was gonna bet something on that. I don't know. I'll eat my hat. Not that I have a hat. I'll find a hat and eat it. If she is eating less calories than she thinks she is, I do not believe it for a second. You cannot maintain a body of that size by being in a restriction. It's literally physically impossible. Like it goes against the laws of science, the laws of nature, the laws of physics. She is eating a hell of a lot more than she thinks she is. And if she's doing a lot of takeout, this is the problem with takeout. You don't know what's in there. You can eyeball it, but you never really know what's in it. So she probably she does she probably doesn't even have to start restricting calories. I think if she were to just start cooking all of the food herself from scratch and just focusing on whole foods, maybe don't drink things like Starbucks lattes and stuff. I don't know if she does, but things like that. Uh, be mindful to not drink calories. And uh, yeah, I think that would probably just make an enormous difference. I think that because she's quite busy doing like social media things all the time, I think she has a lot of takeout food. And what she thinks maybe is healthy probably is not very healthy at all. Check on that and I need to be acknowledging what I'm putting in my body, what it is fuel-wise and how it makes me feel. This doesn't mean um, I'm refusing to eat certain foods or I'm restricting everything. So it's more just becoming aware and cognizant of what I'm eating and when. So I'm setting myself a normal goal, which is just 2000 calories a day. That's what a normal person should be eating. She's going to struggle on that 100%. I would not put her on 2,000 calories a day, especially with the exercise that she's doing. Like, granted, she will get, she should, if she's eating 2,000 calories a day, she should lose fucking pounds. Then wait, like, a pound a day almost. Maybe not quite, but maybe every couple of days she should lose a pound. The weight would melt off her if she um, restricted that heavily. If I were to coach her, somebody her size, which I wouldn't, because somebody her size needs uh, in-person uh more advanced training because that's just the reality of a distance coaching somebody like her is just not realistic and not safe and not it won't be responsible of me as, a, as somebody that's a coach but uh besides that point i would she would probably be on like close to 3,000 calories with me but whole foods and uh yeah just focusing on like nailing those calories sticking to the meal plan and it's not even a meal plan the way i do my meals is like actually pretty free you can pretty much eat whatever 
it's just whole foods and you just pick a mix from the different food groups um, a portion size or one and a half portion sizes so it's not really uh, restricted in the sense that you can't really have anything but uh, besides that point yeah 2000 calories she's going to struggle because she's going to be starving because she's going to be probably halving your calories and i don't know if you ever halved your calories that shit's brutal brutal i do low calorie days and they're around 15 1600 calories and they suck i don't enjoy them at all but it is what it is i feel like this is hard because uh every conversation i've ever had about food as a plus size person has somehow been turned into a discussion about my weight regardless of if we didn't start there at all so it's either you shouldn't be eating that or good for you eating that like there's always a an emotion associated with the act of eating as a plus size person and yeah, it makes sense because, like, either you're ve vehemently, 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 that's the word. You're either in the camp of, like, eat whatever you want and, like, you know, it's all beautiful and, you know, like, whether fat's beautiful, that's, like, an opinion, obviously. But, like, it's all good for you, there's no such health thing as health risks, or you get people as me that are like, why are you doing this to yourself? Why would you want to, like, essentially imprison yourself in your own body? Why don't you want to have... Uh, feel, why don't you want to feel good, have no pain, have mobility, have quality of life. Um, so yeah, and it's, you know, when you see people like Amber, there's nothing wrong with people like, or her size, eating necessarily things like pizza. The problem with that is, is that they, <laughs> you've eaten enough pizza, basically. <laughs> um, you should focus on eating healthier foods and not fast foods, because the fast food is what got you into this position that you're in. And I want to try to do this in as emotionless way as possible. So I will not be sharing my food journal and I will not be sharing what I eat on a day-to-day -day basis because I don't think that's healthy because I think it, it plays into that narrative of villain and hero around certain foods. And I think that all food is good. All food is worthy. Some food makes me- I, I do believe there is good and bad food. I don't know why we, we're not supposed to label things as good and bad. At the end of the day, some food is nutritious and has uh, vitamins and minerals and it's gonna be beneficial to your body and other food doesn't. Like, that doesn't mean that you should never eat it, but, like, some food is good for you, some food is bad for you. That's just the reality of it. Right? I don't I don't understand why we can't say good and bad about things, when it's just, it's, it's like the fact of life, that some things are good for you and some things are bad for you. It doesn't mean you should never have anything that is bad for you, it just means that you should moderate the intake of that me feel great some food doesn't make me feel great and we're just on a journey to figure out what that is and also figure out what's the optimal fuel for my body and the activities I'm taking on again it's about being my most capable self not being my most attractive my thinnest or my most societally acceptable because if you think that I'm gonna suddenly like lose a bunch of weight and blend into society then you are at the wrong channel and you do not know me because that is not me so those are the kind of things I'm working on I think I will tell you that like I thought exercising every day would just magically fix everything and I would be in front of the camera today uh, a lighter version of myself and that did not happen. I think I need to say that. I need to be honest about that. And I think that's good that she realized that. I think this is a mistake that, you know, other weight loss channels are making. <laughs> not looking at anybody in particular, but yeah, you can't outrun a bad diet. That's the reality of it. Um, again, I can only refer this to myself. I always train a lot. I always have a really high energy output. And um, unless I am super strict with my diet and I restrict with the calories, I do not get lean. Now, and granted, like you may say that I'm like quite lean right now, which I am for my off season and I am compared to other people, but I'm not stage lean. So in order for me to get stage lean, I do need to be heavily restricting for a serious, for a longer period of time, so. And I've been down and I will say that having exercise be part of my life on the days when I have felt really shitty, being able to go to the gym and just cross off on my list something that I've achieved has helped. It's also given me endorphins and a little bit of a community. I know the people in the Orange Theory I go to and they- So, obviously very sad that her granddad is sick, but I agree. I think that working out is a great way to try and deal with stresses in life. Now, I'm gonna obviously be biased about that because I love training. But it's just that mo for me, it's like, especially when I'm going through like poor mental health or whatever it may be, I find that a oh, fucking hell cat. Why, why are you attacking me for no reason? Um, yeah, I do find that like that hour or two that I'm in the gym, I can just be in my zone and maybe it's a shit session then. But sometimes you do end up chatting with people and they make your day a bit better. Or sometimes I'm very much in my zone. I don't want to talk to anybody. 
but it's just there's something about going to the gym that just it's like therapy it really is like therapy and um, I think unless you do it you don't understand it and you don't know what the feeling is like but it's it does it just makes you feel good even if you don't have the best session you always feel better after a workout always they are offering me support and a sense of family so what I've gotten from exercise isn't just moving my body more, it's given me a little bit of peace in a moment that's really traumatic for me right now. And I'm grateful for that peace and I will not be letting it go because I need it. <laughs> so I think that, that what I've learned from this journey is that exercise isn't really so much about my physical health um, as much as it is about my mental health. I mean, yes, it does affect my physical health, but what it does for my mental health is just so much better and my social health. And I'm realizing that I am leaving the house more I am talking to more people on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm engaging with more activities. I'm doing more in my life. That's really important that she's recognizing this. And yeah, this is another reason why working out is good. Like, and it doesn't have to be in a gym. You can go like join like a walking club or like, I don't know, go play tennis or something. Like there's, there's other ways she can stay active. It doesn't have to be in a gym if that's not your thing, but you will get a sense of community. And it's nice. It's nice to see the same face every morning and say hi to people and just have a reason to get out of the house and do something and feel like you've been somewhat productive at least. Um, so that's where we are. That's where we are 100 days in. Now we have next month's goals, which are really just tracking my food and keeping the momentum on working out, but just allowing myself to get some damn rest. To just well, I don't know if she does weigh-ins or side-by-side -side pictures, but um, it's been a few weeks now. She's been tracking her calories, then the next time I do a reaction, I should imagine that she's lost significant amounts of weight. Maybe she does track that somewhere, I don't know, I don't actually look at her channel or I don't follow her, so maybe I need to, it's something that I need to pay attention to a bit more. But yeah, if she's tracking her calories, eating 2,000 calories a day, she should lose like 20 to 30 pounds in a month, maybe more, maybe more. Just to get some rest. But I'm, I'm proud of myself for sticking to this, I'm proud of myself for consistently being part of this journey and being honest about where I am and what I'm capable of doing because I think it's really easy when you look at someone and they're like everything was so easy I went to the gym every day and I eat my food and magically I'm, I've lost all this weight in my lives better that is the narrative that we get served but it's missing all of the pain that went through that process I agree and this is why I also like to share my bodybuilding journey um, I show it when I have days that aren't good I show it when I'm not eating as per plan and I don't try and pretend, and I sh tell you that some of it is really fucking boring. And I don't, I just think it's important to, as a person of influence, which I am, I suppose, to show that, you know, fitness isn't, it isn't, fit, the reality of fitness and looking a certain way is not what social media wants you to believe it is. A lot of it is boring, a lot of it is repetition, and a lot of it is consistency, and a lot of it is just, same shit, different day basically um, and that gets hard sometimes and that's where willpower comes in that's where discipline comes in and uh, yeah I like sharing that side of things because I find it personally not very helpful when people are nothing but positive about everything all the time because that's not life anyway uh, I'm gonna stop this video here because basically I am freaking starving but I need to get food shopping so I wanna I wanna go and get my food shopping done so that I can have some breakfast finally and then uh, I'll train this afternoon it's very controversial for me to train the afternoon but I can't train out of Botox on yesterday which is why my skin is not um, foundationed up but basically I got Botox yesterday so and a face, a face uh, they, she cleaned my face as well so that means that I can't really do any exercise or extreme frowning or anything for like a uh, 24 hour period so that means I have to train the afternoon but I do get to have some premium rice soon, which I'm actually quite excited about. So, I need to go and get food shopping. Yes. <laughs> Alright guys, so I am going to go. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'm very curious to see how she'll get on. Like I said, if she's eating 2,000 calories a day, she needs to lose at least 20 pounds. She could probably lose 30 to 40 pounds at her size, to be honest. So, we'll see, we'll see. I'll check back in with her for sure. Uh, but it's nice to see that she is actually thinking about calorie counting, because she's not going to get success otherwise. On that note, now I am really gonna go. Insert A. What emoji shall we do? The dancing lady emoji, because she does the dancing TikTok, say. So, like the dancing lady emoji. That one, you know. <laughs> uh, comment, like, subscribe, dislike the video. If you disliked it, let me know down below why. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.